All right, everybody, what's happening, man? Welcome to today's edition of the Swag Talk YouTube Show. Um, we're gonna pre, we're gonna review the Alabama A&M Jackson State game. Just gonna talk about it briefly. Not gonna prolong your time too long. Um, as usual, you know, like the like this video, subscribe to the page, share the video, man, get it out there, and um, hit the notification bell to um, get notified anytime I upload any content. Also, check out the podcast Swag Talk on anchor.fm slash Swag Talk. Spotify, Breaker, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all them joints. Um, you can find the show on there. Just search Swag Talk, S-W-A-C-T-A-L-K. That's one word. Um, we actually have some a new show up today um, where we review... Um, all the games that took place this week. So if you want to get my thoughts on all the games and uh, probably a little bit more of a statistical analysis of the game, um, you can check that out on the podcast. I do more statistical statistical type stuff on the show. On the YouTube page, I, I kind of do more of uh, just my thoughts and feelings. So I don't bore you too much with numbers. But if you like numbers, then... Go ahead and check out the podcast. And if you don't, still take a listen to it, man, and, and, and pass it on to somebody else. They might like it. Um, check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash talk and instagram.com slash talk um, to stay up to date on what's going on with the show. Now, with all that out the way, let's talk about this game, man. Jackson State made a quarterback change. They put in Quincy Casey, um, a, a freshman from Memphis, had very little action in 2019. And just mop up duty in this in this season, and you know a lot of people didn't know what he was gonna do or, or, or anything. I was one of those people, you know. I felt like maybe Alabama and L's defense would be able to get to him, and you know, kind of make him uncomfortable. But the coaching staff in the early portions of the game, especially, they did a good job of keeping him comfortable. You know, a lot of short throws. Um, Warren Newman got a lot of work as a slot guy. Christian Allen, another slot guy, got a not, got a lot of work. But they were really helped by the coming out of nowhere of uh, Santee Marshall, running back uh, transfer, well, walk on transfer for Miles College. And honestly, if you look back a couple years ago, he's the second guy from Miles College to come to a swag school and, and ball out. Uh, Trey Smith transferred from Miles College to Southern University in 2018, and he came from out of nowhere. And when he left Southern that year, he was their leading receiver. Big play guy made tons of tough catches all year. So Miles produces a lot of good guys out there in the SIAC up in Alabama. So you know, keep an eye on, out, out on that program because they, they they have talent. And when those guys go to other schools, they produce. And it was just one of those you know happenstance type of things that Marshall even got to play. Uh, Tyson Alexander was out with injury, so he kind of got bumped up once the coaches saw the work that he was putting in in practice. And uh, Greg Williams got hurt in the first quarter on the first play so they pressed him in the service and he stepped up he made a couple really big plays early um second half couldn't really keep the momentum going on the running game but the passing game was clicking over 300 yards passing warren newman three touchdown receptions baldwin one touchdown reception um now offensively there's not a lot to say negative about what jackson did the line did allow four sacks but you know that I mean, that's kind of what you get from them. But they did help pave the way for uh, over 100 yards rushing. So, it was a mixed bag for them. Uh, Alabama and them on defense, I thought they missed a f uh, they missed some tackles early. Um, a lot of that is rust. You know, you don't really tackle that much in practice. So, when you get in live action, you tend to kind of miss, you know, not, not take the right angles and things like that. But they also have some young guys in the secondary who made some very crucial mistakes on, on run plays. They um, took a couple steps inside too far a few times, maybe set themselves up for some bad angles, um, didn't play as aggressively and, and fast on running plays, which allowed Marshall to hit hit some holes because he bounced a couple things outside and they just were out of position and, you know, they couldn't get him. So that kind of thing was an issue. And they also, you know, because those guys were young, Jackson State worked on them. With, with the passing game. They gave us some big cushion on some plays. They tried to blitz a lot. And that left the middle of the field open. So they they didn't have as great of a defensive performance as 
you would you would think from what a lot of people were talking about from that South Carolina State performance, but they did enough. And I think that's if you look at that uh, 2019 Alabama and M defense, it's it was the same. You know, they gave up yardage by the boat load. They gave up they gave up points, but their offense was good enough to to overcome all of that. And the same thing happened this week. Um, Akil Glass put on a show. I mean, you know, if you hadn't seen him before, then that's what he was basically um, working with a clean pocket pretty much all the time. I think only a couple of times Jackson got any kind of pressure. And when they did get that pressure, it came from linebackers because that defensive line is still not generating any kind of pressure. Um, Alabama and them didn't run the ball that much. They ran for about 93 yards. But if they committed to it more, they probably could have ran for more. But 440 yards passing and six touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, I think 27 of 40 passing. I mean, that, those are like computer Madden numbers. You know, those, you know, three receivers, almost 100 yards. Ibrahim, 94 yards. I think Moore and um, Hilaire each had over 100 yards. Ibrahim, two touchdowns. Moore, Hilaire, and um, Howard, the tight end, one touchdown. So, and Garrett Quarles with a beautiful, beautiful screen pass that was just set up so perfect for a 43-yard touchdown. That offense, when it's clicking and that passing game is clicking, is very special. They have a ton of guys that can catch the ball. Um, Cameron Young is another guy who can play. He played a little bit of running back, and he can catch the ball out the slot. Uh, Kendrick Johnson's another guy. He didn't even get any touches, but he's a, a, a tight end that can make plays for them. And they, they just have a lot of guys, and if you let that quarterback get comfortable, they're going to dice you up. And it doesn't matter what you have in your secondary. If your line can't help, then you can only cover for so long. And they do a good job of, you know, if, if guys are covered and, and Glass has the time, he, he's going to read the defense. He's going to go through his progressions. And he'll throw down to the fourth or fifth guy if he has to. And they did a lot of five wides. And linebackers ended up on slot guys quite a bit. And it was just a mismatch. And Jackson just, you know, really didn't have any answers. And they have to, you know, they have to they have to do some soul searching. And, and because the one thing that I don't like, and this is when any team does this, I don't like talking like I know you have to talk to the press and I know you have to say you know coach speak and this and that you know you can't just get out in the interview and say yo we suck you know all my guys are trash you have to say you know we're working things out in practice you know we you know we had a good practice no you know nobody's gonna really say we had a garbage practice we don't have any energy but every week and losing teams do this every week when they when they come out in practice they had the best practice ever they worked out all their problems. They're closer as a team. And that was everything that they said this week. And none of it was true. And if you see the end of that game. When Aubrey Miller. Who was a great player. Uh, he, I think he just had a composure loss. And he you know, he hit a, he took a, a, a bad hit on the quarterback. I wouldn't necessarily say it was dirty. It was just. It was a frustration play. You're losing. You you right there, the dude taking a knee, you, you you pop him. He didn't hurt him, you know, he didn't he got back up. But, you know, Dion did a good job of getting him off the field and out of there because you don't need that on your field right now in a game that don't mean anything. But that's that's the kind of stuff that it builds up, you know. And when you are built up to be a certain thing and you're not really that, when that adversity hits you start to show who you really are and you become a end of team of individuals instead of a, in, a team, a, a team, you know, and that that's, that's what the biggest problem for me is, is every time I, I hear anything about what they're doing is we fixed everything in practice. You know, we worked everything out. And then you hear the coach say that they still having problems communicating with defense to run from the sideline to the players on the field. You've played six games. There's no way in hell that you should still be having communication issues on how to how to get how who on what play to run on defense. That's that's just inexcusable. You you know you already know you've practiced. You know what guys can do and can't do. You know what the offense wants to do. 
where's the disconnect? So either the coaches don't know you, you, you one way or the other. You're saying either the coaches don't know what they're doing, or the players are dumb. And you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't like to bash players because those guys are playing for free, especially on this level. Ain't nobody get no no money under the table or otherwise. So these guys are out here for the love of the game and, and a college education. So if you if if you as a coach are indirectly saying that these guys are too dumb to understand what the play calls are and the lineup properly, and you got half guys running this play, half running that play, then that's that's something that's from the coaching side, and it, it leads to really what are you doing in practice? And a lot of it, I think, is just you know you're losing. Let's be real. Most most people in this situation did not think that Jack. Most people who weren't versed in what Jackson State was the last few years didn't think Jackson would lose a game this year because they had players and they had Coach Deion Sanders who is still not proven as a coach. But now you have guys looking for answers and the frustration is setting in. You've lost three games in a row, all three in different ways. And you honestly, you're coming off of a very bad loss and you're playing a game against a totally different team, and you're still having the same problem. So a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it is the coaching, and some of it is the players. But the thing that I think a lot of people need to take into account is, and I'm going to shoot, shoot Jackson and Dion a little bit of bail here, but one, you know, what you really need to look at is they hired Jack Deion Sanders on, like, September 21st. He because of obligations and everything that he does out the field, he couldn't start until uh, January. So they had to hit the ground running and have a coaching staff come together and, and learn how to coach together and learn idiosyncrasies and tendencies of each other in like a month and a half before the first game. And, if you look at any te- any team when they when they when they bring in new coaches, if you look at Southern, they they have a consistent program, but they brought in five new coaches mainly on the offensive side in the first few weeks of the season. That team was discombobulated because you had the co- the head coach has an idea of what he wants to run and how he wants to run it. The offensive coordinator came in with his ideas, and now he's versed to marry what he wants to do and what the head coach wants to do and what his talent can do. So you saw like the first couple of games, you saw Southern do a lot of five wide receivers and things like that. That's not anybody's skill set on that team. But as the time went on, they were able to mesh a little bit and find some success. Jackson has been kind of vanilla most of the time. Some people say that, you know, they don't want to show anything, but the thing is, man, you're in a season, so you're going to show something. And when the fall comes, people are going to know what you're going to do by week three or four anyway. So who cares? You know, put it out there, you know, do what you got to do and, and win games. But if, you know, if you're approaching this as a preseason type of deal, then you don't need to talk any trash before the season starts. So you can't have it both ways. And that, that's what I think. That's that's what a lot of issue I have is against Everwaters and Valley, it was one way. Now it's another way. It can't be that way. It got to be all or nothing. And this, you know, obviously this situation can be fixed, and it most likely will be fixed because they have one game left against Prairie View, which is going to be a, a tough game because Prairie View's defense is very, very good. Uh, offensively, they have some questions, but defensively, they're very good, very aggressive, and they love to live in the backfield. So it is, that, that offensive line is going to get tested big time against Prairie View, but. The thing is, they can take all of this spring and spend the next couple months going over that and understanding what they need to do as a coaching staff to win games. And I, I don't, I think it's too early to, to really say this guy need to go or that guy need to go because then you're gonna bring in somebody else to a staff that still doesn't have that much continuity and, and try to make them work with what they're doing. So they have some things to work out. Um, Alabama and them, obviously, defensively, they still have some issues. Um, a lot of what they did the year before, I, I saw again. But offensively, they're second to none. 
And if the offense can click, then they only need to make like a stop or two every game. And if they're comfortable with playing that way, then who am I to, to, to tell them to stop that? So some teams play like that, you know, like that old Big 12 offense, you know, you, you score a lot of points because you give up a lot of points and you make enough stops at the end of the game, you can still win. So they're, they're moving on to a big matchup against Alabama State in the Magic City Classic on Saturday. Uh, Jackson's off on Saturday. They would have been playing all corn, but they're off. So, you know, a lot to still work on. And I don't want to hear this week that everything was fixed in practice because it's not being fixed in practice right now. Or uh, if it is, for whatever reason, it ain't translating to the field. So let's leave that in the locker room and in the press room. Let's just not let's just not go there. And, and let's let's see a team come back to work and, and, and try to win. So upcoming week, Bayou Classic in Shreveport. That's totally odd to me, but Bayou Classic in Shreveport, Southern and Grambling, Alabama and Alabama State and Birmingham on Saturday. Valley and Texas Southern in the pillow fight of the week. And Pine Bluff and Prairie View hooking up for possibly the West Division Championship on the line if Pine Bluff wins that game. So we're going to preview three of those games on our, our YouTube show. We're going to do them individually next week because this is a big week. And I think uh, no matter what, the Bayou Classic deserves some shine. Regardless of how Gramlin is doing, the Bayou Classic always deserves shine. The Magic City is a huge classic. It deserves its shine. And because Prairie View and Pine Bluff are both undefeated in conference, that game definitely needs some light on it. So we're going to do what we can do and bring you three previews individually on the YouTube. And once again, I'm Charles Wells, man. I like to, I like to thank everybody for supporting what we're doing here. And we're going to keep on banging out this swag content. So with that being said, I hope everybody have a good week. And we'll see you guys throughout the week with our game previews.